the previous step it got cut because of battery issue so in the Greek for praise Apanaso in the Hebrew Tehila the word Tehila meant to say for us to be looking to show forth the demands of Bible doctrine it is the word for epi plus aineo that is to extol to sing praises to honor to Lord God and to make known to these people to understand what has been recommended or what it is that we need to show forth to this world therefore it has to be like a proverb it has to be like a laudatory discourse it has to be the way how it has been used in the sense of epi naos that is concretely a great commendable thing and that's what we have to be if he has used deuteronomy 26 19 the way how we could look in the congregation of bible doctrine of deuteronomy 26 supreme above all the nations for tehillah to be demanded to show forth the attributes to be demanded to show forth the qualities and the deeds of Lord God the Father so in Ephesians 1 6 he says to the praise so that you could be a commendable thing that's worth of great praise that's what you have to become a proverb you have to become a song for them in this pilgrimage trip that's what it meant to say and yet Though we have been made supreme above all creation in Christ, though we have been given to understand that the greater purpose for us in this church age is to glorify God the Father, moving from glory to glory to the highest without having any hurdles. If ever you think you have enemy, it's your own flesh. It's your own activities towards the lustful patterns of the old sin nature. You're just having your own flesh to be your own enemy, dear brethren. And your ignorance. And therefore we find in Proverbs 15, 22, 15, 19, not 22. Sluggards. Lazy ones. Sluggish ones. Those who are not interested to know what is the will of Lord God the Father. Those who are not interested to consider what is the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit operating in us to represent Christ, to represent God the Father to this unbelieving and perishing world. Before this adulterous and sinful generations, you want to let go the glory of my Christ and exchange and deny the word of the Lord of our God for the lustful patterns of the old sin nature and rationalism and empiricism on this earth. You need to be careful. You have been kidding yourself, dear brother. You need to be very careful. And what we are looking today in our pulpits, you are finding men, those who do not know even the meaning of this glory and praise. That they have to come as a praise, they have to come as a laudation, they have to be sung in this people. Therefore, it says to the praise of the glory, again, doxa, wherever you take classic attic ionic or whatever greek it is it's an absolute glory and the word glory meant to say for us lord's opinion and judgment to be made known to this earth lord's absolute perfection of his duty to be made known and that's the glory what we look it has a very wide application it's about the dignity honor praise worship if in the past it was for a name that should be splendorous enough, he calls now to the glory, glory, the word glory, which is dignity, which is honor, which is praise, which is worship. And why he uses the only both words, apanaso and glory doxa, because it is his grace. We have to be as a great song of laudation to Christ. We have to show forth his honor, his majesty, his praise, and everything to Lord God the Father. We have something great to understand in these verses. Therefore, what we are before the foundation of the world, being kept for the glory of the Lord our God to the highest, to the praise of his work, being predestined as adoption of sons. And not just any way you can understand sons, but it has been used in the Greek. We have four categories, brephos, paideia, technia, and last one, huios. 
And this huyas is what we have been given over here as an option. Do you know who are these huyas? These huyas are the people who would come to be as a responsible citizens to the Lord. Responsible citizens. The subtle sons are something great where the creation is awaiting for the manifestation of them. We read in Romans 8. If not, the creation is going to destroy. The creation is meant to say not that the nature, the unbelievers. Once again, emphasizing the principle of Matthew, Mark 16, 15. To go and preach the gospel. Emphasizing the principle of Matthew 28, 18 through 20. To make disciples. Emphasizing the principle again, Acts 1, 1, 4 through 8. Understanding to realize we are the witnesses. We have something great, dear brethren. The great things of Bible doctrine. The world will not understand it. Therefore, whenever we find in Isaiah chapter 41, 42, 43, stating to the point, you are my witnesses to them. You show forth to them that you are my witnesses. The word being used in the Hebrew is Nagat. And Nagat meant to say, if someone doesn't go and explain about them, someone doesn't go and make them to understand about them, they will not come to know. That's it, Nagat. Therefore, Lord of a God is all the time. As he says, Dhamma in 46, 46 5 of Isaiah, who could be like me? Shama, who could represent like me? And again, Marshall, who could be like my Lord God, the Holy Spirit? When he's been so great, when he's been so unique, he has made us also to be unique. He has given with the greatest burden of all time in our life. And we can carry that burden alone. Not with our human intellectual energy, as Apostle Paul says in Colossians 1.29. According to the striving power that worketh in me, According to his great striving power, operating power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit worketh in me, he says. And that's what we need to be, dear brethren. That's what we need to understand, dear brethren. And yet, to the praise of his great laudation to be commendable, to the glory of his honor to be made known to this world to the highest, how many people are coming forward? Where your clutches, where you stuck up, mining earthly things, looking earthly things, considering earthly things, you have been held up there. Thinking that your frantic search of happiness on this earth is enough. Let me have boy crazy, girl crazy, world crazy, cosmos crazy, lustful patterns crazy, and that's enough. Or oh, you want to be free. Nothing can make you free. Apart from Bible doctrine, said the Lord, if you are a believer. If you are an unbeliever, apart from Christ, none can deliver you out from that slave market of sin. None. None can deliver you out. Christ our Lord our God said, I am the way, the truth and the life. We need to follow those standards to understand that the world doesn't know if we don't go and proclaim them, if we don't go and nagat to them, this works. They will not come to know, they will perish. If Christ our Lord of our God has given us this great work and tomorrow we are accountable and answerable for the grace given to you, Will you be like Samuel or Saul, the man who in 1 Samuel said, I have done the work of the Lord, I have obeyed his commandment, he claims. But did he obey the commandments? No, he did not. He went to destroy that which was vile and refuse, and that which was there to be destroyed, he killed them not. Will that be your fate at the judgment seat of Christ when you go to claim and say, Lord, I have fought a good fight, it is all by the power of thy grace. The Lord God would call you, I shall not forgive your trespasses. 
In looking upon the righteous standards of my word, he did not meet. In judging Satan on this earth, he did not come. You are living a life that could be only worth enough for you, but you haven't been worth enough to me, neither usable to anyone on this earth. What is your purpose? Lord God said, I have been born to witness the truth. And for what you are using, your glory, your talent, your time to the Lord. Are you like that one steward who digged and kept that talent into the soil and came not for the help of the Lord? And Lord God said, the Merozites let them be cursed once, the Tikkaites let them be cursed once. They did not come to the help of the Lord. And Jeremiah says for us, Cursed is the one who does the work of the Lord of God negligently, ignorantly, arrogantly. And he may say, Lord, I did the best, Lord, I did the best. But Lord God would say, Workers of iniquity, I know not who you are. Dear brethren, life is too short. Do not waste the valuable grace of my Christ in vain glory. It's better not to use the grace of the Lord of a God for your filthy lucre, for your lustful patterns of the old sin nature. It's better for you not to use in those terms. It is very safe. We have to give an account to the Lord that we have purchased the Kairos moments in this chronological time. We are answerable to the Lord. Be aware. You may think nothing on this earth is more important for you than to just go and pay rituals. But I would say, number one priority should be Bible doctrine. In order to know the truth, learn the truth, and bring, get free to the truth, you should be available. You should make all your great attempts to get and take this knowledge of truth. Whether it may rain or shine, whether there may be life or death, you need to come and gather this great truth. Life is too short. We are answerable to Lord God the Father, not and never to men. We cannot be foxes in the deserts no authority in your hand and coming and serving in the midst of this decayed dissolute congregations without the food if you can imagine your physical flesh how it would be and as many people know some people would let go even food and water and they want to die for their gods in Buddhism or Jainism whatever it is they practice and they say it's a honor that eventually without food what happens? They die. That's the simple logic. Without the knowledge of Bible doctrine, does your inner man also die like that? And you think you're feeding your inner man weekly once it's enough. Wake up to the reality, dear brethren. Wake up. Lord God would get our every thought to be revealed at the judgment seat of Christ. And we need to be present, available to save ourselves from the untoward generations, scholias generations, curved and crooked generations, because we are having already the times of refreshing every breath through the word of the law. And the greater you spend your time not to know the truth, not to learn the truth, not to observe this truth, you are held responsible, not we. Our duty is to teach to you the word of Christ. Whether you take it, consider it, or believe it or not, our duty is to teach. Because we overcome the wicked one. Because greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world. And we overcome the wicked one. Our duty is to be witnesses for truth. Whether they may be hearers or forbears, whether they may look or not, 
besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. That's enough. And what we spoke, Lord God the Father, will be a witness when you go back to the heaven to understand. If I would have known this warning earlier itself, I would have been a great one. But prior to that, while you are here on this earth, if you have the wisdom that is nothing but the fear of the Lord be being the beginning of the wisdom, if you have the fear of the Lord, kneel down then and there itself and ask Lord God the Father to send you your bona fide gifted right shepherds. And Lord God the Father is tapping his feet and to send those men who would feed you with knowledge and with understanding. Lord God is awaiting but you are not opening up your mouth and asking the Lord. Christ will not come in his flesh. Holy Spirit cannot take the flesh. He has a body prepared for Lord God, the Holy Spirit. That's every believer in the Lord. And Christ will come through us because as a Christian, we are little Christ to Lord God the Father. And we are talking about the incarnation. He made it. He finished it. He is going to come the second time to church. That right now we are now called many sons unto his glory. Representing Christ. Representing Lord God the Holy Spirit through our lives. Though the world may not look. We are now the children of Lord God of the highest. For his highest praise and glory for his grace. Dear brethren, think over these issues. If you don't have the bona fide gift of the pastor teacher, do not enter the pulpits and make up yourselves to survive in the foxes, like the foxes in the deserts. Without having your absolute authority of the Lord, how could you stand? Wake up, dear brethren. Do not destroy the flock of the Lord, our God, which has been purchased by Christ His blood. And every believer has been called to be made perfect and complete in the sight of Bible doctrine so that we shall not be ashamed when we stand in his presence to the praise of his glory. Think over these issues, dear brethren, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments have been dedicated to those who are without Christ, without hope and without eternal life. In not a little link to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple. Believing Christ you shall be saved. As for the believer, the greatest might is to grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teacher, the greatest might is to care so upon Lagan. Herald the word in season and out of season because of the diamond my witnesses wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond my witnesses is indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic coast will be our witnesses. And what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth, no matter however the chips may fall. So which way you want to go, dear brethren, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Infinitely Divine Holy Father, what a great and unique privilege it is for us to learn the lessons, O Lord. Father, you have made us to be the light and salt of this earth. You have called us to represent in this world like Christ in the power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Though the world may seek in search of spirit, O Lord, they should show forth, they should come to know through us when we show forth that we are indwelt by the Trinity in this world. Father, conforming to the image of your dear beloved Son, according to the stature of your thinking, and calling us to have perfection as Christ, as the Father in heaven has through the ministry of Christ as a role model for us. Help us, Father, to witness the truth in the midst of this perverse and crooked nation generations. And yet, O Lord, you have said the world is not enough for us. You have given the chances to be far above the creation which you have made to yourself, above angels, above nature, and above 
the things pertaining to animate and inanimate things. What a glorious privilege it is, O Lord, for us to witness the truth. And Father, see if there is an offense way in us, O Lord. Lead us in the way of everlasting truth to the praise of your glory. Help us and challenge us by these messages. In Christ's name we pray, Sovereign Lord, the Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these terms. Amen.